This fresh coat of the startup life has been sprayed on nice and smooth by Wagner and the Flexo series of paint sprayers. Startup Nation, my wife decided she wanted to rehab her childhood home. The goal was to fix it up and invite a nice family to rent it out. We knew one of the biggest jobs we had to undertake was painting. However, from the walls, the cabinets, and even the siding outside, it was going to be a big task. As entrepreneurs with a company to run, we knew this was going to take up a lot of our time, which is why we decided to get a paint sprayer. And after much research, we decided to go with the sprayer from the Flexio series from Wagner. Startup Nation, these sprayers are top-notch because of its flexibility to paint or stain walls, furniture, cabinets, and more. It's 10 times faster than using a paintbrush, which was a big selling point for us. And you can paint or stain right from the can. It's also easy to clean in five minutes and being great for indoor and outdoor projects, a paint sprayer from the Flexio series clearly needs to be part of the arsenal in your garage. So if you're ready to stain your deck or like me, feel your daughter's request of a bubblegum pink room, up your game with a paint sprayer from the Flexio series by Wagner. Take it from me. Your time will thank you. It's time to be about that life, the startup life. Here's your host, Dominic Lawson. All right, Startup Nation, so I hope you're ready to receive some value today. My name is Dominic Lawson, and this is the Startup Life, the show for entrepreneurs and career-minded professionals. You know, Startup Nation, as you engage on your path to entrepreneurship or uh climbing up the career ladder networking and stuff like that is going to be very important and also having a great smile to go along with that you know when you're doing presentations and meeting people for the first time that's super important uh, but also taking care of your body is going to be important as well i know we're all dealing with this pandemic COVID 19 and coronavirus and stuff like that but we have a great guest to kind of help us out with all of that today he is a graduate at the USC Dental School where he finished top of his class. He is also one of the most well-known dentists today. For the past 33 years, he has created smiles for many of Hollywood's top stars. He has been featured on Oprah, CNN, Entertainment Tonight, and has appeared on the as a dental expert on CBS, NBC, ABC, and The Doctors. He is also the author of The Toxic Overload, The Truth About Your Body's Natural Defense, and how to experience whole body health. He is Dr. Karush Madahi. Dr. Madahi, how are you, sir? Very good. Thank you so much, Donnelly. Thank you for having me on. No worries. Are you ready to pour some knowledge into Startup Nation today? Because I think you can help us out. Absolutely. All righty, let's do it. So if you would, Dr. Madahi, just kind of share with us your background, your origin story a little bit more. Yeah. So first of all, I wanted to let everybody know, I'm first, first of all, I'm very glad to be here. I very much enjoy your show. I think you're doing a great job. Thank you. And a great service for all your listeners. So thank you so much. No worries. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. And uh, I, the background starts with when I was 13 years old, I decided I wanted to become a dentist. And it, the story is always uh, somewhat surprising for people because they say, how did you know at such a young age you wanted to become a dentist? Right. I, from a family of healthcare professionals. My brother is a cardiologist. My uncle is a general surgeon. My brother-in-law is an internist. So healthcare field was always around me. And I really enjoyed that type of a thing that you can actually help people and help get them out of pain, diagnose, problem solve, that type of a thing. Mm. I also enjoyed very much working with my hands. Gotcha. So anything that involved working with my hands and problem solving, I, I loved it. And I wanted it in the healthcare profession as, as well. So it either was uh, becoming a surgeon or becoming a dentist. I saw my uncle's lifestyle where in the middle of the night, multiple times he would get calls and he would go to the hospital. So I decided I wanted more of a structured hour such as a dentist. So that's the background in terms of how I started thinking about becoming a dentist. And then I went to UCLA undergrad and then USC dental school. And then I started to share an office with one of my professors at USC in Beverly Hills. And I have uh, been in Beverly Hills area ever since I graduated. And then, and then about eight years later, I decided to open up my own practice, no longer sharing my practice with anybody else. And I, I, that's what I've been doing. Uh, cosmetic dentistry, and also figuring out how I can help people uh, sort of solve some of the problems they have with regards to um, 
the systemic disease, oral health, oral health connection with whole body health. Those are the kind of things that always um, very much interested me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing all of that for sure. And we're going to dive into that a little bit, but I, I want to ask you this, a quick follow-up because you talked about, you know, uh, you know, working for somebody else at first, you know, in that first, you know, getting out of dental school, you was working for somebody kind of talk about some of those things that you learned that maybe you didn't really get from medical school or dental yeah, school so, rather. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. I think the, the most important thing I have to tell people is that, any type of the professional school, doesn't matter if you're going into an accounting school, law school, medical school, dental school, what you get is a basic knowledge as how you can solve people's problems within that industry. Right. So we know real tooth, a doctor knows how to diagnose a disease, a lawyer knows how to make an argument, and uh, an accountant knows how to balance What's the balance sheet? What's the PL statements and things like that? Right. But running an office, running an organization, having other people under you, figuring out the, the differences between um, staff members, um, also understanding overhead cost, mm. uh, profit margins. This, none of that is, uh, is actually taught in any of these places, except if you go maybe to MBA where you're doing analysis of businesses to understand where the profit is coming from. But other than that, you really don't get any um, understanding of it. And it takes quite a while to actually get used to it and understand it. And we had zero um, classes on it, or I had zero understanding of it when I started. Gotcha. It, let me ask you this. If, if if you were to go back and, and be a professor, is that something you would implement as well, as far as like, not just the dental, the dentistry and the craft of that at all, but also for those who were thinking about, you know, having their own practice, would you add that part in there as well? If that, if you were ever a professor? Yes. I, I would tell you that I would spend 50% mm. of my time. I'm sorry, go ahead. I didn't cut you off. Go ahead. The real world. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because, you know, the thing is that the basic knowledge of that particular industry, it also takes a bit of practice, right? So you have to practice on patients and everything, how to do a filling, how to do a crown, how to do a root canal. Right. But, but 50% of your time is actually not doing that. Mm. 50% of your time is actually figuring out how to run the business properly. And you're always uh, sort of um, caught in between all of these dynamics of a practice overhead staff, hiring, firing, and the dynamic with between the staff. So, th and if you ask anybody, and when I talk to my friends, number one issue, staff. Mm. Number two issue, practice management. Number three issue, growth. So these are nothing to do with the actual practice of dentistry in terms of treating patients. It all has to do outside of that. So that's why I would spend 50% of my time on it. Got you. Got you. Thank you for sharing it. And I think it's fascinating, Startup Nation, that whether it's dentistry or cupcakes, it's like, you know, some of those things are are universal, like, you you, you know, uh, how to manage a staff, how to, you know, you know, look at that balance sheet and stuff like that. So I appreciate you sharing all of that, Dr. Madahi, for sure. You're welcome. So Startup Nation, like I said, Dr. Madahi is the author of The Toxic Overload, The Truth About Your Body's Natural Defenses and How to Experience whole body health. And if you want to purchase that book, Startup Nation, uh, if you listen to the replay of the podcast, we have a link there in the show notes for easy access for uh, either Amazon or wherever you get your favorite uh, books for sure. Dr. Madahi, I got to ask you, man, because like, you know, you, you wrote this book, you know, a while back and uh, given the times that we're living in now, it seems, you know, probably more important than ever. So kind of talk about, you know, when you wrote this book, what was your goal uh, with writing it and, and why is it so uh, uh, so uh, relevant to what we're going through right now? Yeah, absolutely. So the interesting part of it is what I have been fascinated with, I think, most of my life is how did we ever survive over thousands of years right. without any type of the antiseptics, any hand sanitizers, any Clorox wipes, any of the basic care medical. How did we survive? How, how did we ever get here? Viruses have been around for millions of years. Back to, all sorts of bacteria have been around for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. So how did we survive? How, how do, what is it within our body 
that actually defends us against harmful diseases, infections, and all sorts of things that come up. And even prior to the COVID-19 and the coronavirus that we are, we're going through and the pandemic, my interest was always you are surrounded by harmful bacteria and viruses every day, shaking people's hands, shaking right. people's hands, touching the table, touching knobs, bathroom, all sorts of things. Yet we rarely get sick. What is it about our body that's making us strong enough to be able to fight off these types of viruses and the bacteria that's always in the environment? And then it became the singular focus of the past 20 years of my research and also all the different things that I've done in terms of even creating a product line. I came down to one basic concept, which is a microbiome. Gotcha. Microbiome is a microorganisms that live on or in your body, made up mostly of bacteria, but some fungi and some viruses. And their main purpose of a microbiome is there as a first line of defense against infection and disease. Where is the microbiome? It's on your skin. Your skin is covered by microbiome. Mm. Your, your body has so many pores in it. How do you know if you can't see the pores? When you sweat, the sweat has to come out of the pores. Right. So you have pores from inside coming out. And that means there's communication between outside the environment to the inside of your body, just through your skin. Then the, uh, this in your eyes. So there's so many pollutants in the air every day. Mm. Why isn't your eye getting infected every day? How rarely does the eye become infected? Is mainly because of the microbiome coating your eye. There's there is a microbiome in your ears. That's why you don't get ear infection constantly. It's in your nose. Help against respiratory infection. It's also in your gut and in your mouth. Yeah. So the microbiome is basically everywhere. And in, the, in women, this is also in the birth canal. So when a baby is born, going through the birth canal, it gets coated with the microbiome. So that microbiome helps defend us against these types of viruses and infections. Gotcha. So what is interesting for me is I will tell you in the past 70 years, there's a lot of things that we're doing that's destroying this microbiome. Okay. So I'm start simply 98% of the meat that we eat is either has, the, it has antibiotics in it, it has hormones in it, it has all sorts of things that destroy the microbiome. Destroys it in your mouth, destroys it in your gut. Um, the Mouthwash and toothpaste is antiseptic. It kills, when, when you see some mouthwashes, it kills 99.9% .9 of the germs. It's killing all of this microbiome that's inside your mouth. And the interesting part is that 98% of the bacteria are actually helpful, protective bacteria. It's only 2% of the bacteria that are harmful. So when you go destroying all of this bacteria, you're destroying 98% of the helpful good bacteria that's protecting you gotcha. the wipes the hand sanitizers are destroying all of the healthy microbiome on your hands right wipes same thing our detergents have antibacterial uh, components in it that goes on our shirts dishwasher soaps everything has antimicrobial things in it that's constantly destroying all of these uh, helpful protective bacteria so that's the main thing that I started to focus on when I was writing this book. Got you. Got you. Look, I, I want to ask you this, you know, because it sounds like like the microbiome, uh, Dr. Madahi, is kind of like the first line of defense. And then it gets to like, you know, the white blood cells and stuff like that, that people, you know, teaches over time, stuff like that. But it's funny you mentioned that in Startup Nation. He mentions this in his book about one of, you know, the uh, fact number one, antibacterials do more harm than good, which he just talked about. And, you know, Dr. Madahi, like, you know, it's a kind of strange thing to kind of hear that because we're getting this guidance, you know, as far as like, you know, due to COVID-19 to like, you know, uh, not necessarily the wash your hands part, but like antibacterial this and uh, hand sanitizer and stuff like that. What do you say about all that? Yeah, it's interesting. When you actually look at CDS, uh, CDC, mm -hmm. the Center for Disease Control, right. NIH, National Institute of Health, they are not recommending uh, hand sanitizers. Okay. They're washing your hands with soap and water. That's fair. So 
So when when people are asking me, are you against hand sanitizers? I said, I'm not against hand sanitizers. I'm against it at home. I'm, I'm, I'm against it if you have access to soap and water, but I'm for it in hospitals and I'm for it in healthcare facilities where there's much higher rate of infection and these types of harmful bacteria and viruses are in those types of area. You need hand sanitizers there. You don't need wipes to be wiping down your kitchen counter with Clorox. You can just clean it with soap and water but in a healthcare setting, all of those countertops in my office, they are all with very specific wipes that cl- kills everything. It's a very different setting. And I think that's what we have to make sure we understand. Mm-hmm. Because of this difference of settings is why one thing is good for one area, but is totally harmful in other areas. Gotcha. That, that makes a lot of sense because, like you said, you know, you're you know, in a, in a you know, uh, medical facility is also a public place. So obviously you're going to have, you're going to be more susceptible to more of the harmful bacteria and stuff like that. So that makes a lot of sense. I appreciate you clearing that up, Dr. Madahi. You're welcome. Thank you. That was a great. I'm sorry. That was a great question. That's the number one question. Actually, this is always asked of me. Gotcha. Um, Talking about it. Yeah. Gotcha. Absolutely. I I appreciate that. I want to ask you this because in your book, you also talk about, and this, this this has been coming up uh, due to, the coronavirus and stuff like that is this idea of the viral load. Right. Uh, And so a a lot of time, you know, and as of this recording yesterday, I know uh, the world health organization came out with some guidance that was kind of, you know, different from what we've been hearing as far as like, you know, people who are not, uh, no, who are asymptomatic are not really spreading it as much. And then they kind of walk that back uh, a little bit saying that, you know, you can spread the coronavirus if you are asymptomatic. I guess I'm just curious, you know, I, I know science is a, there's a lot of trial of error, trial and error in science, right? And a lot of people, they want to say, oh, you should wear masks. Oh, you should, you shouldn't wear masks. I'm not going to let the government control me and stuff like that. Right. And so it's like, when you hear stories like this, like what happened at the World Health Organization, it can be kind of confusing about who to listen to, who not to listen to, because, you know, at the end of the day, we're all pretty scared uh, about yeah. what's happening right now. So if you could, Dr. Madahi, could you just kind of give us some, vi- some guidance on not just necessarily, you know, also what a viral load is, what that means, but also, uh, how do we move forward if we're asymptom? You know, if we may be asymptomatic and we don't have any symptoms of the coronavirus. So I, I think some basic pieces of information it's uh, is very helpful. Sure, I, I know um, people normally think they hold scientists at a very very high place. The, Pretty much they're put on on a pedestal because you are looking to scientists to tell us what's going on, right? So it's interesting in the science community, we are very much used to making hypotheses that are proven absolutely wrong. We're absolutely used to that. That's why you need double-blind studies. That's why you need multi-center studies. That's why you need uh, the sample size to be large enough. That's what what we have learned. Everything we thought would be one way, it turns out to be another way through all of the research we've done. And this has been true for hundreds of years. It's not something new to what we are going through right now. What made it a lot more um, sort of a laser Uh, type this time around is because you're telling people to stay at home, not to go to work, social distancing, wear masks, do this, do that, do all of these different things. And you, what you're doing, actually, you're scaring people because they're worried that they're going to die. Even though when you look at it overall, the rate of death with regards to the coronavirus is slightly at the end is going to be slightly higher than the um, influenza B virus. Mm-hmm. It's going to be slightly higher. It would right. be maybe half a percent higher, not, not much more than that. Gotcha. Um, uh, at the end of the day, the mask is only protected it, it is for the person who's actually sick. So if they cough, or they sneeze, it goes into the mask, and the droplets don't go in the air. Gotcha. And then, this is sort of true of maybe 99% of the diseases. You need enough of it, enough of that virus, 
in order for you to become sick. Right. So th- that's why the viral load concept becomes into it comes into the equation. That means that the load has to be high enough for you to be able to get sick because at the low viral load, the, the level of virus that's in your body, the body knows how to fight it. Gotcha. It has to reach a certain level where the body is overwhelmed and can no longer handle it, that it becomes an actual illness, sickness, disease, or something starts up with the symptoms. So it could be that we find a great percentage of people could be um, immune to this type of thing because the viral load doesn't reach that high. There could be that the protein structures that is in their body, their immune system is strong enough that can withstand it. It could be that the microbiome as the first line of defense knows to hush to shut it off right at the entry points because where are the entry points for the coronavirus it, it is your eyes nose and mouth mostly right. mouth right mostly mouth right okay. the reason for the mask and the glove is that you don't touch your mouth you don't put in something that you're touching or you were shaking hands or touching somebody or touching the um, uh, common area uh, which is a table doorknob or anything you don't touch your mouth so the glove and the mask is preventing you from touching your mouth so that the virus can enter your mouth so what's in your mouth that's uh, that's helping you out is the microbiome how is the microbiome helping you against coronavirus so one of the first thing is that the microbiome is a coating and the surface in your mouth right it's a coating so if you have really healthy microbiome you're not killing it all day long it take a huge surface area so new bacteria or viruses don't have a place that they can adhere to and grow so in my book i talk about imagine manhattan there's so many buildings there's no place that you can actually build anything right what if you go and destroy everything and there's a whole lot of land that's available for you to build something on Right? right. So that's why these antiseptics do. They destroy the whole area, which makes you more susceptible for the bad actors to get in and actually adhere to the skin and then cause disease. Got you. Got you. Thank you for sharing that. I, I really appreciate that because, like I said, we have a lot of people where, it, I mean, look, it's, it's kind of confusing. We don't come from the medical profession. We're not scientists. And so it, it's, you know, we're just trying to do the best we can. So I appreciate you clearing up a lot of that. Absolutely. For sure. For sure. All right, Startup Nation. So we're going to go ahead and take a quick break. We got to pay some bills. Once again, my name is Dominic Lawson and you're listening to The Startup Life. This fresh coat of the Startup Life has been sprayed on nice and smooth by Wagner and the Flexel series of paint sprayers. Startup Nation, my wife decided she wanted to rehab her childhood home. The goal was to fix it up and invite a nice family to rent it out. We knew one of the biggest jobs we had to undertake was painting. However, from the walls, the cabinets, and even the siding outside, it was going to be a big task. As entrepreneurs with a company to run, we knew this was going to take up a lot of our time which is why we decided to get a paint sprayer. And after much research, we decided to go with the sprayer from the Flexio series from Wagner. Startup Nation, these sprayers are top notch because of its flexibility to paint or stain walls, furniture, cabinets, and more. It's 10 times faster than using a paintbrush, which was a big selling point for us. And you can paint or stain right from the can. It's also easy to clean in five minutes and being great for indoor and outdoor projects, a paint sprayer from the Flexio series clearly needs to be part of the arsenal in your garage. So if you're ready to stain your deck or like me, feel your daughter's request of a bubblegum pink room, up your game with a paint sprayer from the Flexio series by Wagner. Take it from me. Your time will thank you. This episode of The Startup Life is sponsored by SaveTheChildren.org. Startup Nation, Save the Children believes every child deserves a future. In the United States and around the world, they work every day to give children a healthy start in life, the opportunity to learn, and protection from harm. They deliver lasting results for millions of children, including those hardest to reach. 
They do whatever it takes for children every day and in times of crisis transforming their lives and the future we share. Startup Nation, right now, the coronavirus is the biggest global health crisis in our lifetime. It threatens children in every way. COVID-19 has already left many children without caregivers, out of school, and exposed to violence and exploitation. Child poverty is rising. With your support, we can help children in unsafe households and help support distance learning in the face of school closures. Here are some ways your support can make a difference. For just $5, you can buy a baby's first book, providing comfort and inspiring lifelong learning. And for $25, you can serve a nutritious breakfast and lunch to five out-of-school children in need. And there's many other ways you can help support Startup Nation. So go to savethechildren.org slash savekids or www.savethechildren.org forward slash savekids. So if you're ready to make a different Startup Nation, remember savethechildren.org. Make the change for children. The Startup Life is powered by Ladder. Startup Nation, as an entrepreneur, you are the engine that powers your business. We have had many entrepreneurs on the show, from those that played Division II basketball, quite a few Ironman participants, and even an NFL quarterback. And the one thing they all have in common is that they know getting early morning workout wins leads to business success for the day. However, it's super important what fuel you use for your workout to get that early morning success. And that's where Ladder comes in. Ladder is a sports nutrition company founded by LeBron James and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Unlike other supplements, every batch is tested by a third party that is trusted by all major professional sports organizations, including the NBA, NFL, MLB, and more to verify the highest standards for quality, but more importantly, safety. Ladder's goal is to help you unlock your best in any situation. Right now, that means access to special offers and expert advice from their community. Personally, I like superfood greens. Not only does it include the most essential nutrients that are hard to get in your diet, like magnesium, zinc, B vitamins, and vitamin D, they also included the Rodelio root, which helps keep you healthier when stress is high, but also it helps support immunity according to many studies. Use code BETTEREVERYDAY for 30% off everything site-wide at ladder.sport. That's better every day for 30% off at ladder.sport. So maybe you're not trying to be a four-time league MVP or a seven-time Mr. Olympia, but you still need the tools to elevate your health that elevates your business. So go with Ladder and prepare to get better every day. All right, Startup Nation, welcome back as we continue our conversation with today's guest here on The Startup Life. So uh, I want to ask you this, going back to the microbiome, because you have in your book, you talk about the microbiome diet and how that can be effective in kind of, you know, in, uh, boosting its uh, uh, how well it works. Kind of talk about that a little bit, if you would. Yeah. So the the whole thing about the diet thing is a simple thing. And I, I emphasize this a lot in my book that you don't have to go and do everything all at once. Okay. So let's just take it one simple step. The, the vegetables and fruits that we eat, usually, if they're not organic, they have pesticides. Even organic food, because of the soil, have a little bit of pesticide. But overall, organic food have no pesticides versus inorganic food have pesticides. Pesticides are antibacterial ingredients, actually microbial ingredients. That is there to kill things, but at the same time, they it leaves a coating on this on the surface of the fruit vegetable or sometimes they get in there so if you're eating inorganic food you the as you're chewing on it the pesticide is affecting the microbiome inside your mouth and as you swallow it it destroys the microbiome inside your gut um, so eating organic is one thing another thing that i often talk about is that if you're eating meat Make sure that these antibiotic-free and hormone-free type of a meat. So uh, grass-fed organic meat is great. And um, also chicken that's also organic is great. And then if you eat any of the fish is good. But with fish, we worried a little bit about the mercury. But the main thing is about the antibiotic and the destruction of the microbiome right now that I'm just speaking of. Acidic food destroys things inside the mouth, including the enamel. So acidic food, we just don't want to be exposed to a lot of acidic food in our mouth. Um, these are some of the things that I would tell you. Um, sodas, um, carbonated water, all of these are, are also acidic. They, they destroy a lot of things. So we want to get away from some of these aspects and start to build in 
more organic food, more organic vegetables, and more organic meat into our diet to help protect the microbiome. Got you. Got you. Thank you for sharing all of that for sure. Once again, Startup Nation, the book is Toxic Overload, the truth about your body's natural defenses and how to experience the whole body health. So you want to know more about the microbiome and how to uh, uh, make it flourish for your body and your immune system. Make sure you uh, pick up a copy of that book. Now, Dr. Madahi, you also have a, a line of oral care products. Kind of talk to us about that a little bit. Yeah. So um, in... I've been a dentist now 33 years. About 27 years ago, I got so tired of um, giving products to my patients uh, for their oral health and not seeing the results that I was looking for. Gotcha. So I wasn't able to really control the bleeding gums, inflammation, the dry mouth, sensitivity of, with the teeth. And I started to even look into the ingredients of some of the products I was recommending to my patients. And I wasn't... Un I wasn't sure why we're using some of these ingredients. So to simplify it, if we want to have whiter teeth, why do we have blue, yellow, green, purple mouthwashes? Why do we add artificial coloring to our mouthwash if we want white teeth? It made right. no sense. Right. This other thing is that mouthwashes are full of alcohol. There's 24% alcohol in most mouthwashes. Why do we use alcohol, especially denatured alcohol in a mouthwash? Um, and I started to look into some of these ingredients. It absolutely didn't make any sense. There's a lot of toxic, harmful ingredients in the different mouthwashes that we have and the toothpaste that we have. So I started to experiment in my own office, in my own conference room, with different ingredients that were very healthy for you. And the signature ingredient I went after was the dead sea salt. Okay. And the main reason for salt and sea salt and all of these things was based on a, a particular breakthrough study that was done by Dr. Nozari, which is a colleague of mine. He did a 10-year study on homeless kids in Manila that were suffering from uh, juvenile periodontitis, which is early age gum disease with a lot of destruction of bone and gum around the four upper front teeth, four lower front teeth, and the back molars. Mm -hmm. And what he did with this um, uh, group of homeless kids, he asked them to rub sea salt on their gum and twice a day, and he followed them for 10 years. And what he found is that the gum disease stopped, yet the AA bacteria, which was causing the disease, was still alive. So the whole concept is not just the bacteria. What is it about the bacteria that's causing the disease? It was the toxins it was secreting. So with the formulation that I came up with, I found a way without killing any bacteria, find a way to neutralize the toxins of these harmful bacteria that either cause gum disease or cavity or bad breath, neutralize the toxin without harming the bacteria itself. The question is, why wouldn't you want to kill harmful bacteria? Main reason is, in the harmful bacteria in the cell wall is also there is toxins. So when you kill them, that toxin which is in the cell wall of the harmful bacteria, it also gets secreted, and that's very harmful as well. So it's best to control them, control the toxin, and not kill them at all. So that was the whole basics basis of how can I create an oral care product that's number one, certified non-toxic? Number two, it whitens teeth without hydrogen peroxide that causes sensitivity, enamel damage, and gum sensitivity. And, and third, and most important part, it is microbiome safe, mm. protects the oral microbiome. And that's the products that I came up with for sensitive teeth, for uh, people that are suffering from dry mouth and um, also whitening products with whitening strips, mouthwash, toothpaste, and everything else to just um, make sure all of the different needs are met. Absolutely. And, and Startup Nation, if you want to check out these products, we have a link there in the show notes if you're listening to the replay on the podcast. And if you listen on radio, it's oral, oralessentials.com. Uh, we, uh, once again, we have that link there in the show notes for easy access. And it's funny you mentioned that because I see you have a kit like the oral uh, microbiome kit where it comes with mouthwash and a toothbrush and uh, medically developed toothpaste. So I'm, I'm all checking that out uh, right yeah. now uh, for sure. How did you come up with a name for it? So uh, oral essentials, I mean, originally the oral essentials name was that's what the essentials you need okay. for oral 
oral health. And then Lumino is the name, not or the whole name brand of the product. So it's Lumino Oral Essentials. Lumino is uh, shedding light, light. Mm. And light means that you are enlightening people with regards to non-toxic ingredients, lightening, enlightening people with regards to ingredients that do, do not cause sensitivity and enlightening them about microbiome. Got you. Got you. Thank you for sharing that. And once again, Startup Nation, you can check out uh, that link we have there in the show notes for easy access. Now, Dr. Madahi, you have this amazing practice, uh, dental practice in Beverly Hills, where you have all types of, uh, you know, like celebrities and stuff that come through. I, I've seen pictures on your Instagram where you had, uh, I believe that was Daniel Cormier and uh, yeah, Timbaland <laughs> and stuff like that. I, I want to ask you this, man. How were you able to get like this? You know, I mean, obviously you have an, a world class uh, dental practice, but how were you able to get celebrities to kind of come through and, and take pictures with you and stuff like that? So, so I, I think it's an interesting story. I think it's okay. it all it, it all started um, in around uh, two thousand two, where I I was doing makeovers uh, for my patients, smile makeovers, mm -hmm. and and uh, part of the smile makeover was also collaborating with plastic surgeons, uh, cosmetic dermatologists, LASIK surgeons, and everything else, even image consultants, gotcha. to do a whole body, whole full makeover, right? And then I started uh, with one of the plastic surgeons I was working with at the time was Dr. Nassif, Paul Nassif, an amazing uh, plastic surgeon. And um, we did uh, this particular uh, show, Entertainment Tonight show, and um, and with that started our whole makeover shows and these makeover shows um created a celebrity style type of a thing i always had a few celebrities anyway mm -hmm. but that with the whole concept of instagram and selfies and everything it just became some sort of a normal thing that uh, we take pictures with everybody gotcha. and everybody wants to tell something about where they are and what they're doing in their social media so the whole privacy thing started to go away and fade away and then i get more asked to take pictures with people now than ever <laughs> gotcha gotcha thank you for for sharing that L let me ask you this because i know i mean i know there's celebrities and stuff like that but at the end of the day there's still patients and sometimes patients well, they don't always follow the doctor's orders. You don't have to give any names, but do you have any stories like that that you like to share? Uh, I think quite to the contrary. Okay. I, I'm going to, it's going to be very surprising for you. Okay. The biggest celebrities, the bigger the celebrity, the more responsible and the more that they follow direction. Fair enough. And, and I always was wondering why. I ask them, you know, when I tell you to do something, you write it down. You're very careful about what I'm saying and all these different things. And what they told me says all day long, our livelihood depends on following direction, Fair directors enough. and everything else. So that's what I would tell you. Gotcha. Gotcha. Thank you for sharing all of that for sure. Now, I know, you know, in this day and age of the coronavirus, you know, your medical practice, you have to probably take, you know, uh, even extra precautions and stuff like that in your practice. What are some of those precautions uh, look like, uh, Dr. Madahi, if you don't mind me asking? Yeah. Yeah. So I think it starts with patients before they come. Um, we do a, a when we are confirming their appointments, we go through a 30 question questionnaire to make sure where they've been, if they have any symptoms and everything is very, very specific, developed by American Dental Association, the questionnaire. Yeah. So we go through that when they come in. They have to wear a mask. We take their temperature. And then when we are seeing them, also, um, I have to have, the, in addition to the mask and the glove, the masks are N95 masks. Right. And then in terms of the shield that we wear and also how we're sterilizing everything and including making sure there is a vacuum that's on the outside of the mouth, that any aerosol does not get spread out into the air. And air filters everywhere to make sure that we constantly clean up the cleaning up the air. And then other than that, you have to understand the dental office, we have what what is called universal precautions. For sure. That means you have to treat everybody has some sort of a disease and how you can prevent cross-contamination between patients. So there's a lot of strict rules in dental offices 
uh, with uh, with sterilizations and what you have to do in terms of the infection control. That's already in place, but there's additional things that we're doing now than ever. Got you. Got you. Thank you for sharing all of that for sure. You know, a, a lot of times, and people say this all the time, like there are certain, uh, you know, uh, when, when you take care of your oral hygiene and stuff like that, that actually is quite preventative to other like diseases or impairments to other parts of the body. Kind of talk about that a little bit, if you would mind. Yeah, Dr. yeah, absolutely. So first of all, the oral health whole body connection um, is an interesting one because people uh, that have gum disease, they have shown in multiple different researches that uh, they are more prone for heart disease, diabetes, um, women that um, with early term uh, pregnancies, so premature babies, um, also colorectal cancer, lung cancer, Alzheimer. So something is happening in the mouth that is also creating some of these issues. And what that is, is that the gum disease is a form of chronic inflammation and chronic infection that could be living inside your mouth and you're not doing much about it. So bleeding gums is an early sign and then after that is gum loss, bone loss and everything else. So because your mouth is a most absorbent part of your body, so a, a, a person who's having a heart attack, the doctor tells them put two nitroglycerin pill underneath your tongue. They're not asking them to swallow it because everything gets absorbed into your body very rapidly mm. through your mouth. So whatever is happening inside your mouth can bleed and go through your entire body. So that's why oral health is very important. But by the same token, because of the oral health that's important, is also an entry point for a lot of bacteria, viruses, harmful things that can be coming inside your, inside your body, starts in, in, in your mouth. So making sure that your mouth is healthy reduces the viral load of your mouth and of your body. As a result, there is a much greater way of handling what's incoming and not letting it spread through your, throughout your body. For sure. For sure. Thank you for sharing that. And Startup Nation, I know as, as we engage on our path of entrepreneurship or climbing the career uh, ladder, you know, we're always trying, you know, trying to make sure we take care of our bodies and stuff like that. But that oral hygiene part is super important as well. And I'm glad Dr. Madahi uh, kind of pointed that out for sure. So I appreciate you sharing that, sir. Thank you. Uh, I want to ask you one last question about celebrities, because I know you've worked on a ton of them. And we talked about that a little bit. Who has, in your opinion, has like the best looking smile uh, that you just ever seen? Like, you know, like you're just like, wow, man, like I wish I would have done that work. That's a, some amazing work. Or maybe it's natural. I don't know. But who, who yeah, somebody think, out there has like an amazing smile to your I, opinion? I, I think naturally um, Julia Roberts has a beautiful smile. Gotcha. That's partially because it's a wide looking smile. OK. You many teeth and the color of the teeth are very beautiful. Gotcha. Julia Roberts. Eh, can't go wrong with America's sweetheart. I definitely <laughs> understand that uh, for sure. I, I want to ask you this. At the end of the day, like I said, you have this amazing, you know, uh, dental practice. You've worked with a ton of, you know, celebrities and other people and stuff like that. At the end of the day, Dr. Madahi, what do you think your legacy will be and why? I, I think the legacy would be um, how I incorporated a lot of technology in my practice in order to speed up certain procedures I hear that. and um, making sure that people are well taken care of. But personally, it would be, um, I have always looked as to the root causes of problems, not the symptoms. Gotcha. Um, and, and that root cause is what, um, would be also important in people that are going to be uh, starting up a business. They have to understand what is it that's going to bring in success, but not short term, long term. How are you going to be around for five years, 10 years, 20 years? And, and you've got to be thinking with all of these long term things. So you really have to basically make sure everything that you do is systematically correct and you're always doing the right things no matter how difficult it is 
Got you. Thank you for sharing that. And before I ask the last question, I'm going to let you remind you, start mentioning that we're wrapping up with Dr. Karush Madahi, you know, one of the uh, very uh, well-known uh, dentists in our country and stuff like that. I want to make sure you pick up his book, The Toxic Overload. We have a link there in the show notes for easy access if you listen to the replay uh, on the podcast. Just want to say thank you so much, sir, for coming on the show. We really appreciate your value uh, and your time for sure. But now I'm actually going to turn the microphone phone over to you because there's somebody out there in startup nation who's feeling a little discouraged especially considering everything that's going on if you would dr madahi take us out with a few words of encouragement to wrap it up for today i absolutely will uh so you know uh, it, when we're talking about what's happened in terms of the coronavirus i think it's a it's a great example of a shock to the system something that we never that it is not uh, the recession or something Something came about that it ended up um, uh, really uh, making life very difficult for many people. So personally, I had to close down my office for two months. Um, And during these two months, instead of sitting there and worrying about the loss of income, doing all sorts of things that uh, that I was doing in the office and I could no longer do it. I really concentrated on writing this book, The Toxic Overload. I concentrated on anything and everything that I could do with different aspects of company. So at the end of the day, one can decide to sort of get swollen into the idea of how bad everything is, or they can decide what can I do about it today? Gotcha. And concentrating on what you can do is much better than feeling sad or upset about what's happening, which you cannot do anything about. Awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. And that's going to wrap up our session of the Startup Life. Dr. Mdahi, thank you so much for coming on, my man. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you for the great job. No worries. And as always, Startup Nation, if you have an idea, be about that life. Startup life. If you want to let us know what you think about our show, have an idea for a show topic, or would like to advertise on our show, send us a message on the Startup Life Podcast Facebook page. And while you are there, like and follow our page as well. It's a great way for us to engage with you, Startup Nation, and really grow our community. The link is there in the show notes. Subscribe to the show as it can be heard on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher Radio, Spotify, or even on your Facebook timeline or any other platform you like to get your podcast. If you are listening on Apple Podcasts and you find our content valuable, please give us a five-star rating as it will help us climb the charts and help more people find our show. You can also listen to the show on the Startup Life Podcast new website. There you will find the all-new startup blog where I write on many topics that are interesting and helpful to you on your path to entrepreneurship. And hey, If you have an idea, be about that life, the startup life. Startup Nation, do you have friends and loved ones that you want to do something nice for, but maybe they live in the next city, the next state, or even halfway around the world? Well, I have a solution for you. Koya is the new and best way to let your friends and family know you're thinking of them. Choose a friend, record a message, and hide it in a location that they are likely to visit and give them a clue. When they arrive, your message will instantly appear. You can even send them a gift. Best of all, the app is completely free. Get Koya.com to download it now. That's K-E-T-K-O-Y-A dot com. Or check the link in the show notes. Koya, show you care when you can't be there.